Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Glad to have you along today. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. The Ground Control Cyclops Brewer is changing the game for batch brew coffee and more. It is basically rewriting the expectations that we have for coffee equipment. Um, Not only does the SCA award-winning technology extract flavors from your coffee that you never thought possible, um, just amazing performance in this machine. It gives you unprecedented control, but it also has a lot of versatility in that on top of making game-changing batch brew coffee, it also can make tea, hot chocolate, batched ice lattes, cold brew. And as we look for stability and resilience and versatility in our businesses over the years, this is the kind of equipment that you need alongside you. So if you're all about quality coffee, you want to level up your batch brew and get something on your counter that has unmatched versatility and control, then I definitely recommend the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. Go visit them at their website, vogacoffee.com. That's V-O-G-A coffee.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly. Espressly works with independent coffee shop owners just like you to create your own custom branded mobile app. Uh, Your customers love the experience of your coffee bar. That's why they are loyal. That's why they come to you for their coffee needs. And when you want to offer them something that brings convenience Oftentimes you have to compromise on the experience and that's where Espressly comes in to marry the two to kind of give them that experience that they know and love from your brand along with the convenience of mobile ordering process. And this is a no risk model. There's no setup or development fees. It integrates with Square, it has label and receipt printing capabilities. All of the information is stored in the app and you get to keep the information. And I think entering into the new year, you should consider this. Uh, If you've ever thought about uh, jumping into the mobile app game, they make it really easy. Go check them out and sign up today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. All right. Well, today I wanted to talk with you about the difference between you and your employees. And one of the key differences, of course, there's a lot of differences, but one of the key differences has to do with how people latch on to things when they are employees versus owners. Now, I want you to imagine that you're an employee and you just enter into your employment with a coffee shop and they teach you all about coffee. They teach you all about latte art. They teach you how to work the bar. All this information for a lot of baristas is pretty new. And even if it's not new, there's a lot of pressure attached to it because your job is basically uh, to do this well, right? You know, so you, you're incentivized heavily to embed this information in your psyche until it is habit, it is in deep, and you don't really uh, have less of a chance of screwing up, right? So, In both cases, whether you're a new barista or a seasoned barista relearning some things, you still latch onto this information pretty deeply. Now imagine that the owner comes around and changes something in the cafe. They change how you make um, a, a drink or how you make coffee. Now what's happening on the outside might not reflect what's happening on the inside. On the outside, a barista might say, okay, um, well, what's the new information? But on the inside, they might be saying, oh my gosh, you mean I need to like uproot everything I know about this you know, subject and uh, it's, a, it's a huge deal and how am I gonna recommit this to memory? Um, now, baristas are great and baristas do this all the time, but what I don't see happening a lot is much respect for the fact that the information that's changing is more than just information. It's a way of understanding your work. It's a way of understanding you, you know, your being in coffee. And to an owner, looking from a 30,000 foot view, it's curating the process, especially if you're an owner that has been a little bit removed from the bar. These decisions that you make, to you, you've already gone through this process of saying, okay, we're gonna change this. You've convinced yourself. And now you're communicating this information to the barista in and oftentimes a pretty glib way without much empathy for exactly what the barista is going to have to do to retool their understanding of the process. And what happens in that is owners get pretty impatient with the process of change because they don't consider how baristas latch onto things a little bit deeper than you do, than the owners do. Uh, or those who are in charge, because I think there's a implied understanding as an owner that things are going to change and that 
especially is because you are the change maker. You have the authority to change it. And when you flex that authority, it kind of makes the change easier, especially because you're not the one necessarily that has to live within the systems that you create, or is not as much as other people. So a deference, I think, to the baristas and what they're going through and what it means to actually shift their understanding of a previously understood norm or, or, or culture is really critical. Now, one of the ways that you can sort of uh, cut this off at the pass is when you hire people, let them know that we, we might change things. You know, this is a learning organization because we have to iterate. We have to change. And by giving them at least a little bit of a heads up that there might be some change in the future, it gives them some kind of an asterisk next to whatever subject it might be, how we steam milk, how we build drinks, at least so that when the change does come, they'll say, well, you know, they said that this was going to happen. So here it is. And we're going to change things. It doesn't have as much of a heavy impact on them. Um, but it, it's still difficult. And so if we're seeking to change something in the cafe or a process or make a decision that impacts the lives of other people downstream from where the decision was made, then you need to do the work not just to make sure that the actual change itself is a good decision, but that the process of that change and the communication of it is done with empathy toward those who are responsible for actualizing it. So if you say, we're going to change the way that we're going to do uh, uh, tamping coffee, and you expect your you know 15 baristas to change the way they tamp coffee in one week, well, that's your fault if they don't really do it, because they need to relearn a lot internally. And it's not just, oh, well, I told them to do it, and they didn't do it. It's very callous. When I hear owners talk about, you know, well, I told them, and they didn't do it, and it's just like, if you were in their position you wouldn't do it either, even though you wanted to, because it's not all about simply hearing and doing. It's about restructuring neural pathways. It's much deeper than that. So let's get real when it comes to communicating change. Let's get real when it comes to understanding that as we seek to build better businesses, implied within that is change. And as we want to change and build more resilient companies, we need to make sure that we're taking people along with us and not just dragging them with us and not just doing things without regard for them because that's not how you build resiliency. If you don't bring the people along well, then the process doesn't come along well. Your business really doesn't stand much of a chance because the consistency won't be there. It's all about people. Back to being a people first organization. You want to change something? Think about the people. Make your decisions on the process based on that and acknowledge the difference between yourself in them and and how the interplay between the two needs to be balanced. If you bear that in mind and let that dictate how you proceed with decisions and change, then I think you're going to see a lot more fruit and a lot more buy-in from your staff and you'll get to see the positive results from that change a lot more so than if you did not. So I hope that this was a helpful episode for you. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the shop.